So can you tell us a little bit about how you got started on your instrument? Sure. Well, I think it started maybe because of sibling rivalry. You know, my sister is two years younger than me, and we were living in Raleigh at the time, and I started piano at eight years old, and I didn't like it at all. And I quit after about eight or nine months, uh, much to my parents' chagrin. And then about two years later, when my sister was um, eight years old and I was 10, she started piano lessons. And I think I didn't want her to be better than me at something like that. And so I started again at age 10. And the rest, as they say, is history. And I, I enjoyed it and I, I kept at it and did it for pleasure through uh, junior high and high school and eventually decided that uh, this was going to be my life. We moved to High Point when I was going into the th third grade or fourth grade. And I started studying piano with uh, a wonderful musician and lady, Sarah Joyce, who was the organist at our church at the time. And um, Sarah guided me for, uh, two or three, maybe even four years, and then eventually decided that I should move to uh, to another teacher as I became more advanced. And she um, suggested some wonderful musicians at um, uh, the, it's now called the University of North Carolina School of the Arts. And so I went to uh, the School of the Arts weekly to study with Clifton Matthews, who was uh, a wonderful influence for me and taught me a lot of things um, he was, I suppose, my first artist teacher. And um, and then after that, I, I studied with Paul Stewart and Joe Piazza at UNC Greensboro. And they were wonderful. Uh, every, everybody just contributes so much, even though they're all different. And, you know, the older I get, the more I appreciate all of these different influences that I had, even reaching back to, to my uh, early years in, in High Point. So do you have um, do you have any favorite places that you've performed that you could share with us? Well, I've been lucky to to travel a lot. You know, my uh, doing what I do has allowed me to see a lot of interesting parts of the world. Um, I guess I would this is just on my mind because I was just watching the the video feed that uh, the Queen is lying in state now in Edinburgh at St. Giles Cathedral, of all places. Um, and I was just remembering, uh, I've played quite a bit in northern England, in Northumberland, not far from Edinburgh, just over the, the border. And I played once at a church there that was 900, 1,000 years old, just out in the countryside. It was freezing cold. My hands were numb throughout the entire concert. Um, so I don't think it was a very good concert, but it was such um, such an inspiring and such a, a, an interesting place to play. I think I was probably in my 20s, late 20s, early 30s at the time. So I hadn't traveled much at the time and just being in a place with that kind of history was so unique for me because we don't have those places in America. We simply don't have that kind of history. And just the, I remember the smell of the place and this, you know, centuries of incense and the stone floors. It was just a very memorable experience. And subsequently I've been fortunate to play in other such old churches. I go to Italy every summer and um, there are all these wonderful romantic venues that, that we don't have in America. I can't imagine playing with my fingers being numb. That sounds. Oh, it was not good. Not good at all. <laughs> um, could you tell us a little bit about one of the pieces on the program and why you chose it? The Sonata by Lowell Lieberman, I think, is a very interesting piece and an important addition to the repertoire. And it's something that I premiered actually in 2003 or 2004. He wrote the piece for me, and it's. Um, to this day, it remains his largest work for solo piano. And Lowell's work is, has become quite popular among pianists and uh, flutists and chamber musicians. He's written a lot of music and it's very grateful to play. 
It's very beautifully constructed. Um, audiences enjoy hearing it. Musicians enjoy playing it. And I think he's really, his stock continues to go up as a composer. And I think it, it really has staying power. So this piece I haven't played in probably 15 years, but it's been, I played it a little bit this summer and it's been really a pleasure to go back to it and uh, find new things in it. So I, I mean, I'm looking forward to sharing it with the, with the audience in Greensboro because I think it's, uh, as I say, an important addition to the repertoire and it's starting to be played by pianists all over the place. So I'm very proud of my association with the piece and with Lowell. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, okay, and so then just for this season, the question, this is our season of inspiration. So one of the things I thought about asking our artists is, you know, what inspires you as an artist? Well, I think I feel very lucky to be a musician because it uh, is a profession that's not really a profession. It's because I, I'm lucky in the sense that I get to do something daily that I love. I work with these uh, master composers, even though most of them are dead. Um, but I get to delve into these great works of art and I get to work with young people in my position at Northwestern as a teacher and constantly reevaluate and study these pieces. And it never gets old and it's never, no two days are the same. And so that's in itself is inspiring. And I find uh, that even when I'm not doing something that has to do with music or the piano, I find connections and analogies and metaphors and other parts of life that connect to music but to get to the core the real answer i for me of your question what has inspired me the most i would have to say my parents because they were not musicians and they didn't ever really i think understand what i did but they always trusted me and they always supported me unequivocally throughout my my uh, childhood as, as well as my college days supported me financially as well as, as emotionally. And the older I get, the more I realize what they gave and what they sacrificed. And I remember the things they said to me. And I remember the things they, they didn't say to me, they chose not to say, which I appreciate more as I've become a parent. And as I see my kids going through some of the things, same things that I went through I recognize myself and my kids, and I recognize my parents and myself. And so just the way they inspired me to be a certain way and to live a certain way, that informs everything I do, especially as a musician. And I think coming back to Greensboro this time will be especially bittersweet because it's actually the first time that I've been there and played there that my parents will not be in attendance because my mother passed away almost uh, just a little over a year ago and my father about five years ago. So I've played, you know, hundreds of times in Greensboro at Easter Music Festival and High Point and other places in the triad. And of course, they were always there. So this will be uh, an interesting experience for me. And of course, I'll, I'll dedicate the concert to them because it will be the first time that they're not there. But they will be there in spirit, I have no doubt, and they will inspire me, as they always did. 